Oh shit. Here we go again. Today, we are checking out ATL Native, my brethren, Bolo the producer's video about too many loop pack makers. Oh, this is about to be a good one. Mm -mm -mm. Loop makers, producers, what is going on, man? What is going on? Three, four, five, six people on a beat? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it is already a hood classic. <laughs> All right, so it's Thursday, September the 8th, and I was going to do a live about this, but I wanted this video to kind of stay up a little longer because this one is kind of close to the heart, and I'm going to tell you why. Three, yeah, it was about three tracks this year that I did not get placed because I had a discrepancy with a particular loop maker. Now, it wasn't with the main loop maker who sent me the loop. It was actually with another loop maker that I didn't even know that was on the loop. Ah, the plot has thickened. So it looks like we have this whole paradigm of people collaborating with other people and then not getting <laughs> credit for something that they did with on said person. Oh yeah, this is about to be real good. I had some issues with it. The first issue was the person who was on the loop that I didn't know anything about it was, they wanted a ridiculous advance that the label could not cover, okay? Bro, what? <laughs> oh man, oh, I got some stuff to say about that. Let's continue. That didn't work out. And really the artist was kind of there, but he wasn't really there. So I wasn't really worried about that. The second one, the manager of the third loop maker Hold up! We, whoa, we have managers for loop makers? Bruh, bruh, I've been out this scene for a long time. That was on this other beat that I did. It's the second beat I'm talking about. The manager of the third loop maker didn't know what the hell he was doing, and he basically slowed, like, slowed up the whole process. He slowed up the whole process, and it messed up everything. So I had to go without that one. So that's two beats right there that I could have potentially had placed that is gone. Dang. Now, the third track that did not get placed, we were dealing with a track that had four different people that were trying to get paid on the loop. <laughs> God damn! At the end of the day, the artist's budget for the payout was $8,000. Hmm. At the end of the day, they were using me to get the loop placed. I went ahead and got the loop placed, and then they come back and say, well, Bolo, you shouldn't have gotten the lion's share. We should have all split it up. At the end of the day, I didn't know that the song had four people on the loop. And now I, I'm starting to understand why uh, TM88 and Southside have started signing like their own personal loop pack makers or whatnot. Now I'm starting to see why a lot of producers are getting smarter with their business and just not messing with sample packs altogether. Because if there are so many different people that are collaborating on a loop and they all want credit because it's a commercial release, that's, oh, that's tough. Four. And then they getting mad at me because I'm the one who got it placed. They came to me, they sent me the loop, well, the first loop maker sent me the loop. They sent you the loop. I turned around, made a few phone calls, whatever, got the loop placed. I went in and added some drums to it, got the loop placed. Mm. Okay? And then they were saying that, hey, you know, I think you're taking too much. And again, you see this paradigm kind of play out often. I remember covering a story, I think, during the Rona era, which we're still in, where Cash Money AP used a whole bunch of loops from people and then it turned out that one producer uh, wanted credit for that loop and so forth and now we're starting to talk about some crazy stuff. And that is the reason why I started 16levels.com. I wanted to make sure that I'm working with people that are sound designers or loop kit makers or whatnot that they don't have a gang of people behind them, that they have a terms of service that is quite clear of who they need to credit and so forth. And you guys don't have to worry about downloading these uh, free packs because I see that is a, a very huge 
paradigm too as well like there's a lot of people that are putting out sample packs and stuff like that and saying free and and people downloading them and so forth but then you find out a little later down the line that they probably didn't even make it or they made it and they want x amount of credit be clear about your terms of service they sent it to me and i'm the one that got it placed but at the end of the day i really was only taking half so out of the eight, I was taking four and I was going to let them. And I think half is fair. To be honest, I don't know. A lot of people won't agree with me, but dog, he did half the work. You might have did the loop. You might have did the loop. And to be honest, I, I, I hate to say it. Any credit that you get beyond the money that, that was already spent, or I don't know how his situation works. I'm pretty sure they just sent it to him and they didn't charge him. In any case, let's be honest. Like if you're going to do business, be clear, be quite clear and understand that the producer that is placing the track has the leverage. I know a lot of sample pack and loop kit makers won't agree with me, but that's what it is, to be honest. Him keep the other four. Now, you guys let me know if you think that I was right or wrong with that, even though I was the one who actually got the song placed, but I don't know. Nah, you I were could wrong. Be wrong. Could be you right. ain't but wrong, bro. Day, I just decided to pass. You ain't wrong, bro. Pass on it because I feel like if I didn't get the beat, the song would have never got placed at all. You know what I'm saying? Well, the loop. If I didn't get the loop and I ain't add some drums to it, it never got placed at all. So that's just my feeling on it. But to do that, and that's good business because, again, with sampling, I think it's important that you credit the other people. Like, I think there's too many producers out there where they will take all of the credit. And you'll see nothing but their name on an album, but yet there's someone that made a loop for them and that's just disrespectful. So I think that Bolo is doing good business in that regard. Uh, the points are up for discussion always. There's always room for negotiation, but you ask the loop pack maker or whatnot, you're not in the authority side of it. Not unless you are the person that's getting the placement. So I'm just saying. I ain't gonna lie to you. At first, you know, the whole loop game and everything was cool because it was kind of making things easier and then all I had to do was just share a little bit of money and some splits. Mm -hmm. But right now, this is getting out of hand. Mm -hmm. Out of hand. I don't disagree with what Bolo is saying in hindsight of the people that he might have dealt with because again, you know, different people have different experiences with other people. It just depends on what goes on behind the scenes. And he's just telling his side of the story. Who knows? There might be another side of the story. There always is two sides of the story. It's this person's side of the story, that person's side of the story. And then the truth probably sits like right in between right here. If you are a loop pack maker, sample maker, sample creator, and so forth, and you want to do good business, make sure that you have some type of agreement ahead of time. Like for me, when I do stuff at 16levels.com, I send an agreement. Like I send an agreement that gives me the right to distribute your stuff for X amount of percentage of work. Uh, you collect X amount of money during either a day or, or per sale or monthly sales or whatnot. And yeah, we just have a nice, clear, concise, small one page contract. And that's what it is. Uh, if you get upset and you don't want me to sell on said stuff, then guess what? I will take it off the site. Ain't nothing ain't nothing but a thing, baby, because there are plenty, plenty of loop makers out there. There are plenty of sample pack makers out there. And a lot of them are good. And then there's a select few that are extremely talented. And those are the ones that I aim to look to work with. So yeah, take it how you want to take it. Uh, I do direct business and you should too. You should always have a EULA or a terms of service where it's quite clear and concise on if it's royalty free or if you want credit on the song or if someone can release it as a beat tape or an independent record, just make it clear and concise so there is no mishap. 
And then there's two sides of the story to everything. I, I mean, let's be real. There are producers out there that are pretty damn evil. I see it all the time on social media. And a lot of you guys are running in behind them because they got Drake placements and they got a billboard hit in 2022. And you're willing to give away everything just so you get nothing from the in return. Like <laughs> there are so many people that you have to scream at them just to get a little bit of credit or a shout out. And it shouldn't be like that. I mean, to be honest, interdependence is one thing that I would like to say. Like there's independent people that will say, I've done it all on my own. Those are the worst kind of people to deal with. I recommend that you stay away from people that will say stuff like, oh, I, I did this. I got it all for, up from the mud by myself because it's not true. Everybody needs somebody. Everybody gets assistance. Everybody gets put on because of someone. Let's be real. And then you got people that are very dependent, you know, the people that are really thirsty for that first placement and they're willing to give up everything. And then they turn around and get upset about it. But interdependence means that it's a team effort. So you don't need multiple amounts of people uh, involved with it. So many different middlemen will ruin a deal altogether. And it's just annoying as fuck to deal with when you have multiple lawyers involved with the situation. Uh, you guys should have, again, a clear and concise agreement. Or if you're just going to sell the packs and stuff like that on your websites or BeatStars or whatever the hell have a clear and concise agreement so that business can be done better on both sides. With that being said, make sure that you check out 16levels.com. I promise you we got our business together and we have some of the dopest samples on the web or just period. Nah, for real. Check us out.